God, we need you. We appreciate you. We love you. We thank you for everything you've provided. Salvation, peace, hope, provision, redemption, health, and healing. There's nobody like you. God, you're so awesome that the devil is not even your opposite. He's nowhere near you to even define himself as opposite. That's how great you are. And we praise you for being in this place today. We bless you for the leadership of this house, the pastors and their staff, and every boy and girl, every man and woman. We celebrate this great day of women in red as we join from the north, south, east, and west to just let you know that we know that we can't do one thing in our future. In fact, we can't do one thing today without you. We need you. And after you instruct us, we commit to obedience. In Jesus' name, and it is so. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All the singing and all the music has been beautiful, but that last song just sealed it. Sometimes we've got to be reminded of what Jesus has done for us. As you're so obedient and still standing, <laughs> I want you to just reach out. And on both sides of you, there are some people standing. I want you to give them a big hug and say, I love you. And you can't do a thing about it. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Thank you, Lord. All right, you were supposed to go to two people. I see the saints cannot count in Long Beach. Some of y'all just going around the room. But you know why? Because when you love some and receive love, it feels good. And the Lord told me something, uh, Pastor, uh, one of my trips to Israel. He said, look back at that sheepfold and tell me what the shepherd is doing. And he was picking up little baby lambs and touching the heads of sheep. And God told me, if shepherds, no, that's not what he said. He said, if sheep are not touched, they die. He said, if sheep are not touched, they die. And we just got touched as sheep by one another. <laughs> tell your neighbor, I think I'll live. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Before I go any further, um, the Bible says if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the lamb. And I noticed that the keyboard artists and the drummer were leaving the service. Not so much that I have something so great to say, but when I caught the, the drummer's eye, I said, if you leave, I'm going to talk about you. <laughs> and he smiled, that beautiful smile he has. I said, you stay. And he said, well, if I stay, what you going to do? I said, I'm still going to talk about you. <laughs> and I let him know that I loved him. But when I looked back at him one more time, he said, I'm going to stay because you asked me to. Parents, that's a lesson. How many of our kids don't stay because we don't even demand it? But then the Lord said, now go in your purse and get the largest bill you have. Fortunately for me, it was only a 20. <laughs> but if it had been a 100, I would have obeyed too. And the Lord told me to bless you with this and to tell you every time you obey God, it pays. I love you. This is a little bit unusual, but the Hartons know me, and from the first time we met, we just loved each other. I need three more people with $20 to run up and give the drummer a 20. Just three. I know 20 of you want two, but I just want three people. Just three people. Sister Banner Caller, she's counting hers. She's one. That's my, that's my buddy from school. So what? I ain't been there for a few weeks. It's still my school. <laughs> I just need one more. One more person. Thank you. Here she comes. Just so much like her mom. She's a giver. 
and her husband wanted her to do it, <laughs> didn't you? <laughs> you got to fake it till you make it in church. <laughs> Thank you. I do especially praise and thank God for the pastors of this house, Dr. Harden and Dr. Horton. They are such a very rich, vital part of my life. And they don't know to this day yet how meaningful they are to me and how special they are. Especially the day I met her, not the time that I spoke, but when I walked into the school and she treated me like I was a royal princess, just as she does all of you. And it made me feel so good. And when people ask me, as a counselor, what do you tell people to do between burnout and burn up? I tell them to stop and take a break. And in the latter part of April, I hit a place in my personal life where I was between burnout and burn up. And some of you don't even know this, but I was in bed two weeks and could not get up. And I said, Lord, um, we're in the middle of a very special project at the school, a take-home exam for three or four chapters. And I had did all of that. I had written it out, and all I had to do was type it. But I couldn't even open my laptop. Has anybody been there? Y'all sitting here like you don't even know what I'm talking about. And some of y'all didn't burn up, and I'm looking at you today. Like, I don't know what she's talking about. I always, me and Jesus, shut up. Been so gone from God, he don't even know what you look like no more. You stop it. Y'all knew I was going to be myself. And this week, as I was preparing to come here, the Lord said, get up and type your tests and organize all of your past assignments. You know them glossaries and them pages of scriptures like we were supposed to memorize them. I believe in reading. And God said, I want you to organize all your classwork and put it in the trunk. And I did. And I typed all of my tests that last them four or five chapters. I think you got excused because you're so smart and stuff. But the rest of us, I typed them and I put them in the car because I wanted the devil to know that I, I may not finish with the rest of the class, but when I finish, I'm finishing well. Look at your neighbor and say, Wanda, be back. Don't, 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 even, don't even worry about it. And I thought about it. I said, God, um, I'm not too sure that we remember that the devil has a plan to onslaught each of us and to thwart the plan of God for our lives, personally and globally. I don't know if we really understand that the devil really hates us, that he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But we as believers have to be reminded every now and then that we are equipped with the strength of God to stand because of the anointing of the Holy Ghost. They talked about they got the Holy Ghost, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that would fire years ago. My family is a, a, a blend of so many reformations, and it makes my life rich for that. The late Bishop Cleveland baptized my mother's mother, my maternal grandmother, in Oklahoma, before the Clevelands ever even came to California. And, and so I know something about when they say, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that would fire. And, and, and I know something about being baptized in Jesus' name. And I know something about Father, Son, and Holy Ghost 301. I know something about don't cross your legs at your knees. Cross them at your ankles. Because if you don't, the mamas are going to get you. Oh, okay, I can't work with you. You're not honest. I thought this was women's day. I know something about praying and fasting. And even while your daughter spoke so beautifully of you, and if they tape that, you need to take that tape and keep it. Because the enemy is attacked in families where daughters and mothers are turning against each other, sons and fathers. And the Bible said it would happen, but it's so painful when it does. Oh, my God. And when she was singing and just celebrating you, my heart rejoiced. And I said, Lord, 
if we can convince our children that you're real, it ain't hard to go out on the, the street and pass out a track. But when your own children won't come to church, oh, God. We've we got we to do some work at home before we go out. Whether or not we make ourselves available to that strength that God gives us is the question. What strength did he give us? Open door. He said, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Now, now, now I, I tell people, some Holy Ghost, you have some power. Much Holy Ghost, much power. No Holy Ghost, no power. And I thought, now Jesus... He said, because I need you to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. you got to know your part. That's why those that sing, I was just excited for you, because that's not my lane. I don't, I don't sing. Now, was a couple of times I wanted to come help and hit that keyboard, because now I can play. Don't fool with it. Don't, don't fool with it. I can, I can play. Don't push me. See, you, you, you will make me get in the flesh, because no, I take these shoes off and show you what to do with that hammer. Yes, I will. But I don't sing. I have to stay in my lane. Don't sing. Because Sister Lady will tell me like she told the people in the choir, the wrong note. We've got to understand that God has released power on, in your life for a reason. Even our personalities. And I'm going to get to the theme in a minute because my message is only about 15, 20 minutes. So this is just the intro. <laughs> Woo, help us, Jesus. We are capable of achieving more than we ever imagine just by accessing the power of the Lord in our lives. Failing is not an option. We can't fail. Sit down, take a break, take you, get you some water, and get back up. I watched people running during the Olympics with, when one man's leg started bleeding. He, he, didn't even, uh, he didn't even pull over and get a Band-Aid. He just kept on running. He didn't win, but he won. See, cause just because you crossed the line, you, the devil told you you were last and crossed last, but you need to laugh at him and say, no, I'm in front of you. I ain't hardly last. I'm up in front of you. Because God has a master plan designed just for us to carry us to a new and exciting heights of splendor, hope, and love. But when economic troubles, has anybody gone through any financial problems this year or am I the only one? When troubles hit your family structure, it's pitiful when your grandchildren don't want to ride with you to even when you go bribe them to get a gift. Oh, I can't help y'all because you're not honest. You're trying to act like everybody in your family love you. Everybody don't love you. They told me to tell you they don't like you. When there are political upheavals, when they're no longer running because they have answers to this country's problems, but they are becoming demonic in attacking one another. There used to be a time whether a president was right or wrong. You did not dare speak against him because God said honor them. Now black and white is talking against our black president. And no, I don't like everything he says and does, but I'm not going to let the world know it. I'm on my face at home praying for him. Praying that Michelle don't leave him. See, okay, y'all don't know because y'all don't know black women. You embarrass us, we'll leave you. Oh, I can't help y'all. I can't. They don't want. They don't. Y'all don't want truth. When upheavals and natural disasters take center stage, we got to get to the place where we can rest assured with an inner peace that passes all understanding that we have the power to live victoriously. Not only us, but our next generation and the next generations because of God. Only through the anointed, powerful gift of the Holy Ghost, will the church forge ahead with strength to overcome, succeed, thrive, and advance, and win. The strength to stand through whatever comes your way is at your fingertips. I said all of that as I began to approach your theme. And your theme is lengthy but impactful. Okay, see, y'all already offended. 
Y'all know y'all thought that theme was lengthy too. It's so lengthy, ain't none of y'all memorized it. See, I ain't got to worry about losing no more money because y'all don't. The theme is seeking God's way for us and our succeeding generations through obedience, prayer, and the word. See, you don't even know just by you staying as a musician. When a minister asked you to stay, you were telling all the other musicians, don't leave when preaching starts. Don't fill your calendar with so many churches you got to play for that you are doing nothing but becoming a hireling. And nobody's feeding your spirit. So you're playing drums Sunday morning and Sunday night and drinking and drugging and thugging. The rest of the week. Because you nothing's been deposited in us to sustain us. I know because I've been playing since I was seven years old. And people think because you're a child, you don't need what grown-ups say. You need it even more. Because the devil is not attacking you for where you are. He's attacking you for where God's going to take you. You got to learn now to dress for your, lo- your destination, not your location. I think I told you that when I was here the last time. I was scheduled to minister in Chicago, and it was December, and it was 80-some degrees here. So when the driver pulled up at the U.S. Airlines, and I got out at at, um, Terminal 1, Mama dropped out with a full-length mink and the hat and the boot. Shut your mouth. If you ain't clapping, you're jealous. One of the mink coats. Ow! And when I dropped out at the curb, brother doctor, then all of the people that had on sundresses and shorts and sandals, they were looking at me like, is she crazy? But when you know where you're going, you don't even stop to explain why you look like you look. You can miss your flight trying to explain your destiny. Because it was 80 some degrees here, but it was 21 degrees in Chicago. The Lord said, just act like you don't see him. Hold your crazy head up and walk to that gate. Learn to dress for your destination, not your location. So I looked at that and it said, God, we're going to seek you through obedience, prayer, and the word. I said, what, what do you want me to place emphasis on today? He said, prayer. He said, because of those three words, that's the only thing I told y'all to do always, and y'all don't want to do it at all. While this young lady was complimenting her mother about having a specific time to pray every day, I had to repent. I used to get up every day by 4.15 and dress to pray at 5. Here of late, I've been praying in bed. Hallelujah. And I'm not saying God don't hear because he's answered a lot of my prayers. But it was so much more effectual. And my flesh got the message it wasn't in charge when I got up. And I repented. While I had my head down, I wasn't crying tears of joy for what she said. I was crying tears of repentance. God, forgive me and let me get back on it. Because he said, pray always. So I'm going to talk to you about that for about 15 minutes. Go to 2 Chronicles 7 and 12. And the Lord appears to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Women, if you want to change the atmosphere and environment of your home, and of your own self, your mind, your health, your finances, your family, you must start with prayer. We think that what will sustain a family and keep it strong and out of divorce court is love, sex, and money. Proverbs said, if you want a good home, 24 verses 3, 4, and 5. He said you need knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Not love, sex, and money. Prove it, Wanda. Tomorrow morning there will be many couples having the best sex they ever had. Get out of bed, take a shower, and go downtown and complete their divorce. 
It's quiet now at the Baptist Conference. Tomorrow, there will be a lot of people that are wealthy going in for a divorce. So money didn't keep it. And tomorrow, there will be people that love each other, that will be weeping as they walk away from each other and still get a divorce. Well, what does it take to keep a family together? What, what does it take to keep a woman in that family first? Let's don't even worry about the men. Let's deal with us ladies in red. You're going to have to have some knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You're going to have to know that when God said pray and acknowledge me in all your ways, he meant that. Now, I want to first tell you, the only prayer that God can hear are those that are prayed. Some of y'all fussing. God don't ever do for me what he did for her. She's always got a testimony. I can't even get enough money for a new weave. <laughs> and she got a new red dress. She got a hat. She got a weave. Under the hat, she got new red shoes. I don't understand it. Did you ask God for those things? The only prayer he does not answer are those not prayed. I hit a slump financially. And I, you know, I'm, I'm married to God, according to Isaiah. <laughs> he says, I'm your husband, man. So I sleep with him. I go to bed with Bibles. And I turn the TV on to, I have direct TV, so I either have Daystar, TBN, uh, Word, TCT, NRV. You know, and they just go on all night. He could be shine, preaching and teaching. And the night when I went to bed, troubled financially, this literally happened a little over two and a half months ago. And I said, God, I need more money this week. He said, ask me. I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I trust and believe you for supernatural increase. It's when I had to go on that prison tour. 16 prisons in two weeks. And normally, even the prisons would pay us for speaking. But the demons had got in there, and they decided this year for Black History Month, they were going to pay, um, what do they call the people that, um, not comedians, but um, they inspire you, motivational speakers. They was going to pay them, and we were volunteering. I said, this is going to be a situation because <laughs> I can't go back home and tell the people and my, also my employees that we just volunteering this month, saints. So the Lord said, what do you want? I said, God, I want you to increase my finances, increase my income this week. Got back to Illinois, started on the tours. They were in Illinois and they were in Missouri. And they said, this church keeps calling and asking, would you... Uh, Come and let them treat you and all of the prison team to, to lunch. Well, lunch is not what you want to do when you've been talking three times a day to prisons. You want hotel. You don't want lunch where you got to sit and be perfect because you're safe and you got to watch what you say and what you do. When they call the third time, I said, Lord, these people keep calling. I don't want to say I don't want to go, and I'm not a mean person. I'm just tired. He said, go. I said, I told the host, tell them I'll go. So we meet, and I walk in. I said, these people look familiar, but I didn't, didn't connect right away. They took us to a real nice restaurant. Now, you know you're tired when you're too tired to order scrimps and lobsters, and they tell you you can. <laughs> you're getting like chicken breast, and they told you you could have scrimp and lobsters. You're, you're tired. <laughs> so the pastor's wife said, ma'am, my husband is in a meeting with some people at our church. It's just 10 minutes from this uh, restaurant saints don't ever listen to pastors with time and counting if they say 10 minutes it's 30 <laughs> if they said we had 500 people it was 220 I said ma'am I'm very tired are you sure I said because we got to get up at 7 to start the next series of prisons tomorrow no it's 10 minutes so of course it was longer so the devil was getting me upset on the way I said these saints have not told the truth <laughs> but we pull up and when the door opens, I said, oh, my God, I do know your husband. I 
said, I, I know your smile. Where do I know you people from? They told me where I knew them from, told me how many years I knew them. He said, God said, you have a word for my house on Sunday. I understand the prison tour ends Saturday morning. Would you stay over? We'll change your ticket and fly you from here back to California. I'm thinking I got a project that was due for the class, and I got to be at school Tuesday night, and these people talking about God got a word. I obeyed. And when I finished, those people gave me so many thousands of dollars on the plane, I couldn't even go to sleep. I was just holding it. <laughs> okay, see, I can't work with y'all. Uh-uh. See. Anybody got near me? Uh-uh! And, I, you know, uh-uh, uh-uh. And then it hit me. I asked God to increase me. I said, God, I need you to increase me this week. How many things have we missed, women in red, because we've not asked for it? Your daughter said you was a dreamer. What did I lean over and tell you? I said, go on and reveal him. Okay, so that was deep. You ought to hit you on your way home. She said her mama dreams and that if she said it, it shall be. I told her, go on and dream my husband. Okay, I can't help them. Y'all, they don't want help. They don't want help. See, because we cannot look for a man. That's not biblical. You don't give no brother your business card with a private number on the back. He that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. But what God told us was, Bless is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee. Psalm 65 and 4. Now, if he ain't saved, don't choose him. If he ain't working, don't choose him. He don't love his mama, don't choose him. He don't go to church, don't choose him. He broke, busted, and disgusted, don't choose him. But while we waiting to look upon him, we haven't heard dream. Y'all don't even know what you got in the house. Rolling your eyes because she looked good today and you ought to be sending her notes how beautiful you look. Two people clapped. All right, I see what I'm working with. You ought to be thanking God because she's your Naomi. You're her Ruth. She can teach you how to catch Boaz. Because if you don't learn how to catch Boaz, you're going to catch a such and such with a bow. I didn't say it, Pastor. I didn't say it. I'm saved. I didn't say it, but you can fill the blank in. Now look at this. Anytime I hear the words, I got 10 more minutes. Prayer and sacrifice in reference to succeeding generations, those people that come after us, I immediately think of Job. Job, you know Job. He's the story of the man who loses everything, it seems. His wealth, his family, his health, and wrestles with the question, why? Ladies in red, if you're married to a godly man who's being tested and tried in every dimension of life, never tell him to cuss God and... Because when, when you do that, ladies in red... You'll become like Job's wife. We no longer know her name. It just said Job's wife. <laughs> when you torment a godly man who is going through for godliness, your name can be blotted out of the book of life. The book of Job begins with a heavenly debate between God and Satan. Then it moves through cycles of earthly debates between Job and his friends, and it finally concludes with the dramatic, divine diagnosis of Job's problem. In the end, Job acknowledges the sovereignty of God in his life, and through his obedience, prayer, and word, as your theme recommends today, he receives back more than he had before his trials. In fact, the Bible says he gets double. But wait a minute. I must share one more observation about Job that is a lesson for all of us sitting here today, ladies and gentlemen, that we allowed in on our meeting. 
and I'm so glad the men are here. I don't want to go nowhere men can't go. I feel protected when the men are here. When that assistant to the pastor, stand up, sir. When he arrived, we were sitting out under the tree, under the shade. When he got out the car and walked up, the sister started saying, no, that brother gets stuff done. I said, that's right. <laughs> and I told him they ought to celebrate you. Not to the point where your wife is concerned, but you know. Look at this. The first chapter of Job, the fifth verse, tells us something about the character of Job as a father. And since there's no gender in God, I want y'all to hear this as women too. As it was so, when the days of their sons and daughters feastings were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And then it said, thus Job did continually. Wait a minute. The father and the mother of these ten children prayed every day for their kids in case they sinned. Now, back then, they were so much more holy, it was in case. Now, we got to pray because they're going to. Okay, it's quiet. Because you think your little baby don't lie. My baby don't lie, honey. I don't care what the school teachers say. Honey, I'll burn that school down. Now we know why your child is bad. You burning school downs, and the child see that, and he over there cussing the teacher out, fighting and acting a fool. Because we're not doing in front of them what needs to be done for them to succeed in the next generation. Job prayed. Job knew that for his children, his next generation to succeed, he needed to cover them in prayer in case they sinned. To do so, he said he would offer up sacrifices of lamb and sheep daily for his children's safety and protection. Soon after this verse, we began to see the various photographs of loss, death, and lack. But what was most interesting for me to note was that until the devil, in verse 16, had burned up all the sheep. Uh-oh. Are you ready for this? No harm came to Job's children till all the sheep were burned up first. Oh, my God. After the sheep were burned up and destroyed and killed, then and only then could Satan come two verses later and report to Job that all his children were dead. What happened? When the devil destroyed his sacrifice of prayer for his children, they were no longer protected. It is not the teacher's job to raise your sons and daughters and grandchildren. It's not the neighbor's hood watch. It is not the church. It's your job to pray. It's your job to get on your knees. It's your job to speak life over your children. And your children cannot die until the enemy destroys your sacrifice. Parents, evangelists, missionaries, preachers, teachers, relatives, friends, and saints, pray for your children. Offer up sacrifices of prayer and praise and worship for your children daily so that they will live and succeed, not become destroyed by the devil. And as long as Job had sheep to offer up for his children, his children lived. But when the devil killed the sacrifice, the sheep and the lambs killed the prayer, killed the praise, killed the worship. He gained access to kill the children. Can I have 10 more minutes? For the next 10 minutes, I want to flip it a little bit. I want to talk to you from a subject that's still about prayer. Return to sender. Look at your neighbor and say, sometimes prayers are returned to the sender. The phrase return to sender, we associate with postal service and FedEx and UPS deliveries when something is wrong with not necessarily the package, but the delivery label on the package. Tell your neighbor, ain't nothing wrong with your package, but your delivery label. 
See, if you're going through trouble in your home, red girls, you don't call your friend. She's going through trouble with her man. She just ain't told you yet. You don't call your mama. She's got 10 kids. She's sick of hearing about you and your husband. The one that will never be tired of hearing from us is our God. He said, I'm the God of all flesh and there's nothing too hard for me. Why do we keep dumping our stuff on people? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad she said that because I've been wanting to tell you, quit calling me. (laughs) Somebody is so glad they were sitting next to their best friend. There are six simple truths why our prayers are unanswered and stamp return to sender. Number one, James 4 and 2 say, because you lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you have not because you ask not. Simply put, the only prayers not answered are those not received. Now, once you send God a prayer, you may not like his answer. It could be yes, no, or not yet. We don't like no and not yet, do we? But I'm telling you, when you start growing in God, ladies in red, there's going to come a time you're going to thank God for every prayer you prayed, and he said no. There was a man in my life one time, and God said no, and I wanted, I thought, I wanted God to say yes. And God got tired of me whining about it. He said, it's going to come a day. I'm going to show you what I delivered you from. And when he showed me, I said, he come a shy. Thank you for saying no. And some of y'all can't clap loud because your spouse is right by you. But some of you wish to God, God had. I feel you. The second simple truth is in James 4 and 3. He said, you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. That you may consume it upon your lust. Ladies in red, your prayers will not be answered if you have wrong motives. What's your motive for your request? Are you dressing to impress? Are you preaching to reach or preaching to teach? In the flesh, I was disappointed I didn't know about the red because I got a real cute little red outfit and stuff. And I got the shoes that would match it and when I walked up here, it would be BAM! But I thank God knew how to humble me today and got me in this missionary cream. Because he don't want you asking amiss. This time next year, ain't nobody going to remember what you wore. They'll just remember if it was fresh. I'm going to say it again. If it was fresh. Folks praying for people, and we say, Woo, they so anointed. Everybody she touched going out. Mm hmm. Uh huh. Number three, in the universal famous prayer, we see these words Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What does this mean? It means when we pray these powerful, impactful words, we're actually saying, God, you rule and reign. You be the only king, and let your will be done. Well, what is open door? The will of God. The will of God is the word of God. So if you're praying and not praying the word of prayer, your prayers can go unanswered answered and be stamped, return to sender. You ain't going to come up in here and pray that uh, Dr. Harden become your husband. What you going to do with her? <laughs> People have lost their mind. Fast with me. God showed me. Uh, you didn't pick 11 other women, so it's 12. You know, God's perfect number 12. The number of God. I want y'all to pray because God has showed me. You telling you telling this to your friend. God has showed me Bishop Blake is my husband. What are we gonna do with Lady May? And if something do happen to her and you get in this face, I'm gonna beat you down in the parking lot. It's not gonna work real good for you. Because you're asking amiss. You don't ask God for your sister's husband. What is wrong with you? And I just saw last week, it's advertised that Ricky Lakey is coming back on TV. That would be Ricky Lakey mess. 
I go to church in Long Beach. And I, the Lord had showed me 10 years ago the head deacon was for me. The head deacon is married, nut. God is not a bigamist. <laughs> Quit asking a miss. I want God to give me a Rolls Royce. Do you have the money to buy the gas? Well, let's back up. Could you pay the $7,000 a year car tag? You asking a miss. Get that Volkswagen and get on down the road. Just got called the pastor and gonna, won't think you're going to split somebody's church and open up a building across the street. What is wrong with you? You're asking a miss. God calls you. Then he prepares you. Then he sends you. I know who's trying to go out soon. Everybody start rolling their eyes. She meddling now. That's why they got me here, because I can say what they don't want to. <laughs> isn't that good? Look at your neighbor and say, isn't that good? Wanda can say what they don't need to say. Let's go to the next thing. God honors and respects his word. So when you're sick, pray the word of God regarding healing. When you're broke, pray the will of God concerning provision and financial resources and witty business ideas and how to get well, starting with paying your tithes. Son, do you pay tithes? Okay, because I have to get my 20 back. I don't bless what God curse. No, I'm serious about that. I don't bless what God curse. Now, I'll feed you, but you can't have my money. And you don't pay tithes. Tell me, that's of the Old Testament. Oh, don't, is that, that nauseating when people start that mess? Oh, no, you know, I'm of the New Testament. I'm of the New Covenant. Okay, how much of the Old Testament are we cutting out? Just Malachi? What about Genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning, God? We cutting that out? That's Old Testament. What about no weapon formed against you shall prosper? We cutting that out? That's Old Testament. What about the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want? How far are you going? Look at that. So when you mentally or emotionally disturbed, look at your neighbor and say, you know if you're not, there's someone in your family. You got to pray the word of God for your healing. And then keep taking your medicine. When you really heal a bipolar and schizophrenia and toxic emotions, we don't have to tell you stop taking your medicine. Your doctor will take you off. God healed me. Then you're out there burning up people's cars. You're not healed yet. You're in the manic phase, and we got to get you back to Kaiser. Okay, I can't help y'all. When you're exhausted, pray the word of God. When your family and even marital issues come up, remember that Paul said, get married, you're going to have trouble. They had made it 40-some years together. Not because they just love each other so much that, oh, my God. No, because they made a decision. It doesn't matter what happens. We're going to be biblical, and we're going to stay. We're not going to mention the D word. You start letting that divorce word come out, death and life is in the power of your tongue. Paul said, get married, you're going to have trouble. Does this mean don't get married? No. It means get smart. Find out what kind of trouble you will have if you get married and get the answers to the trouble before you have them. Then they're no longer a trouble. They are an experience. Isn't that good? Like women learn to hush. When a man is watching TV and you keep going, yeah, 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 and he keeps turning the volume up, he's saying hush. Okay, I can't help you. I can't help you. You got to pray the word of God over your spouse, over your parents, over your siblings, over your children. Pray God's word and pray it till you get your answers. Okay, what's another reason why prayers go unanswered? I got to finish. I need the attention of all the men that dared to be here at the Women in Red conference today. Because this truth is especially for those of you that are married. Men, raise, raise your hand, all the men. From one years old up. All right. Look at this. First Peter 3 and 7 says, Likewise ye husbands. Dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor to the wife as unto the weaker vessel. It didn't say she was weaker. It says as unto weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, uh-oh, 
that your prayers be not hindered. Women, you ain't got to call the pastor and Dr. Horton and everybody in the church complain about how, what your husband's doing. If he's not treating you right, uh, if he mistreats you, because married men, if you want your prayers answered, you got to honor your wives. That's right. And you got you to gotta repent and fix some stuff when you mistreated her. Amen. Brother, when you, you bring disharmony in your home when you mistreat your wife and cause your prayers to be hindered. What does it mean to be hindered? Blocked, stalled, delayed, and held up. Now, those that know me personally, and one of my adjutants, one of my personal adjutants is here, Sister Roche. Love you. God bless you and her son, Matthew, my grandson. Let me tell you something. They know that it's not good for other people on the freeways that I drive. <laughs> I've had drivers, one of my drivers drove for me 17 years before I moved to Atlanta. It wasn't because I was spoiled. It just wasn't good for the rest of you. <laughs> and when my manager called, she said, shall I contact them and see, can someone pick you up? And I thought, well... This is a Sunday, it's three o'clock, it's in the middle of the day, it's gonna take them two hours to come get me, two to bring me back, then another two hours, two hours. I said, I'm gonna be a big girl and drive myself. I should have prayed first. <laughs> but when I got in that car, I began to pray. And I said, God, this is not normally something that I should be doing, but you're with me and I need you to drive with me. And just like I'm talking to you, the Holy Spirit said, do not do 14 South to 5 South to 405 to, to uh, 91 East. He says, do 14 South to 5 South to 110 South to 91 East. Just like it was a GPS. And if I had had a GPS in my little Beamer, I'd have probably not known how to do it and been frustrated. So God said, I'm gonna bypass all that stuff and I'm gonna just tell you what to do. On the news it said, all the trouble that was on 405, I probably would have still been trying to get here. But the way I went, all I kept running into was ambulances and police with their, and fire trucks with the sirens. And all you do to, do to handle that is to get over. I knew not to throw my hands up and say, take it Jesus. I just pulled over and in another lane let them pass me. And I got here 15 minutes earlier because I acknowledge God. Why are we always showing up late? Sometimes because we haven't asked God. You just get up, take a shower, eat your little bowl of oatmeal and start out. God wants to tell you some trouble is on 91st Street, go down 89. But he can't because you didn't take time to hear. Then when you get in a big old accident, look what the devil did. The devil didn't do it. You didn't acknowledge him. Let's finish. Why prayers go unanswered? Mark 11, 23, 24. That whatsoever, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be removed, cast in the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, shall believe those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. Do you believe what you're praying? Or are you just up here, a bunch of words, wasting our time? Verse 24, therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe you receive them, you shall have them. What do these two verses tell us? That a lack of faith will cause your prayer to be sent back, return to sender. Our prayers have got to be mixed with faith to get answered. What is faith? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Line your hope up with the word of God. Empower your hope with faith and get the evidence you need and want when you pray. Before my dad died, they called me when I was living in L.A. then. They called and said, your dad just had a heart attack. I run to the L.A. airport and I fly up north. And I prayed, though. They said, we're waiting for the ambulance. A father named Jesus touching from the top of his head. By you stripes is done. And I'm crying on the airplane. <laughs> So I run, I land, and I get a cab, I get to mom and daddy's house. What hospital is he in? And like the Holy Spirit turned my head, and there was my daddy sitting at the dining room table eating barbecue. <laughs> I said, did y'all just tell me daddy was having a heart attack? What is wrong with you, daddy, sitting at this table eating barbecue? He said, oh, you didn't believe what you prayed, did you? He said, you told me that the heart attack was being stopped by the word of God and that by his stripes I was healed. 
He said, so I just let him take me to the hospital, check me, told him it was reverse, bring me home, and told your mom to give me my barbecue. He said, now don't tell me. Don't pray a prayer over me if you don't believe it. Don't ever do that again. I was so ashamed. All I could do was take me back to the airport. Don't pray it. Don't say it if you don't believe it. And finally, one final reason why our prayers that are answered and sent back return to sender is in Mark eleven twenty five. We don't want to hear this, but I got to tell you. It says, when you stand praying, forgive. If you have all, anything against that, your Father also which is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. Woo! But if you do not forgive, listen to this, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you. That scares me, saints. Because don't none of y'all owe me what I owe God. He says, unforgiven trespasses can hinder our prayers and cause them to be unanswered. Believe it or not, this is tied somewhat to the former reason our prayers are unanswered. For the word declares that faith worketh by love. So when and if we are upset and we're out of love, our faith won't work. Uh-oh. And if our faith won't work, our prayers go unanswered. We must make conscious decisions to forgive ourselves, forgive others, and do so swiftly, if at all possible. Because we really need our prayers answered, don't we? Amen. Ladies in red, don't we? Yes. Yes. Quick review. Our prayers are not answered when we ask amiss, when we ask with wrong emotions, when we mistreat our wives or our spouses, our husband or children and bring disharmony in the home, when our prayers are not mixed with faith, and when we have unforgiveness. Your theme today, seeking God's way for us in our succeeding generations through obedience, prayer, and the word. We must get back to doing the one thing that God requires us to do always, and yet our flesh does not want to do it at all. Pray. Finally, many of us sitting here today need to look at the stamps on our, un, on our return unanswered prayers and ourselves do what that stamp commands. We need to return to sender.